makes the human body theological. This is where we have to begin. What is this expression anyway, theology of the body, and what does it mean? Theology, of course, means what? Study of God. But we tend to have God over here and the human body way over here, right? When we ourselves as Christians tend to think of that phrase, theology of the body, as an oxymoron, a contradiction of terms, we ourselves are demonstrating how far away we are from an authentic Christian world view. What is at the heart and center of Christianity? Uh, that'd be Christ. <laughs> and Christ is the Word made flesh. Theology of the body. Incarnation is what we are talking about here. You see, theology of the body is a clarion call for Christians not to become more spiritual, but to become more incarnational. Christian spirituality is always lived in and through the body. See, our bodies are actually sacramental. Our bodies reveal a great spiritual mystery. Turn the page with me. We tend to think of the human being as a kind of spirit that is trapped in the body. <clears throat> wrong answer, wrong answer. This is actually heresy, folks. We are not spirits trapped in our bodies. 2A. The human being is a person in the unity of his body and his spirit. The body can never be reduced to mere matter. It's not just something physical. The body is spiritual. We are all, every one of us, spiritualized bodies. Just as the human spirit, man's spirit, is so cl closely united to the body that the human being can be described as an embodied spirit. We have this idea that somehow our bodies are a shell in which our spirits live. This is not the truth of the matter. Our bodies and our souls are so closely united that only death can separate them. 2C. I call this the ode to the flesh from the Catechism of the Catholic Church. We have this idea somehow that Christianity is opposed to the body. Nothing could be further from the truth. 2C. The flesh, in fact, is the hinge of salvation. We believe in God who is creator of the flesh. We believe in the word made flesh in order to redeem the flesh. We believe in the resurrection of the flesh, the fulfillment of both the creation and the redemption of the flesh. Flesh, 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 flesh. <laughs> we must get in touch with our flesh. And when St. Paul says we are called to live by the spirit and not by the flesh, he is not saying spirit good, body bad. He couldn't possibly be saying that because that's a heresy and the scripture cannot possibly teach heresy. What Paul is saying is rather open your body to the indwelling of the spirit so that what you do with your body will glorify God. That's what Paul himself says. What we are unfolding here in this close unity of body and soul is that the body is a kind of sacrament. And I say sacrament here with a small s to make a, a distinction. It's not one of the seven sacraments, although Christ's body given for us in the Eucharist is. But our bodies are sacraments in this sense. They make visible what is invisible. And that is what Christianity is all about. God is invisible. We cannot see him, right? But Christianity claims that the invisible God has made himself visible. How? Look at quote 2D. In the body of Jesus, we see our God made visible, and so we are caught up in love of the God we cannot see. That is stunning. God's mystery has been revealed in human flesh. 
theology of the body. If we tend to have God over here and the body over here, through Jesus Christ, these two realities come beautifully together. <laughs>